Quan Jie. Last but not the least, uh, I would like to represent you the last panel, Global Localization. Please join me to welcome the moderator, Christina Alsami, Senior Project Manager of Alta Graham. Christina, welcome. And panel now, Kevin's on Twitter, APAC. Welcome, Kevin. And Simon Wong, Head of Overseas Business of Kong Zhong. Welcome, Simon. One more, Kosuki Korokawa from Japan, founder and CEO of Novolel. Last but not the least, Benjamin Lee, Director of Greater China of Koda Payments. Welcome, Ben. So, I will leave the stage to you guys and Christina. Hi everyone, thank you very much for inviting me here. I'm really, really pleased and thanks a lot for the organization. This is really an amazing conference. So, just like, yeah. So just a little bit of introduction of myself. I'm Christina Sadwick, I'm a localization expert. I work as a senior project manager for Altagram, which is, um, thank you very much. She's a video game <coughs> multilingual localization company. We um, take care of video game localization. We do LQA and voiceover recordings. Before that, I was working for Area Games, a video game publisher, also taking care of localization of video games. We used to take um, products from Eastern market, that is to say China, Japan, and Korea. And we localize and change everything completely to adapt into the Western market. And that's what I would like to focus on our discussion today because we have different experts here, we have different backgrounds, and, uh, but we all do the same thing. That is to say, we take products from a place and we bring it to another culture, or we have someone to do that. So I would like to um, give the word to our protagonist today, so you can introduce a little bit yourself and maybe um, talk about what is localization in your business and uh, the idea that you have of localization. So welcome. Hello. Everyone, I'm, uh, my name is Wang Hao, and but you can call me Simon. So I'm from Kongzhou, and uh, Kongzhou actually is uh, one of the biggest uh, developer and the publisher in China. And uh, from last year, we were focused on the overseas market and the build up uh, uh, local, local team in Southeast Asia and Japan. And this year, we also build up the local team in Taiwan. So in future, we will have more mobile games and uh, of course more. Uh, overseas business and will be uh, largely in overseas market. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Kevin from Twitter APEC Great China team. Uh, we all based in Singapore, but actually we work very very closely with all the Chinese company here. Uh, thanks we travel to China twice a month. Then. Yes, uh, we mainly help our Chinese company like gaming company and branding company, e-commerce, tech and the media to go overseas uh, by leveraging our Twitter platform to go global. And then for marketers wise, right, we only, or not only, uh, we try to help them to build a rich creative uh, canvas and also try to drive marketers ROI uh, we our uh, improved the management, measurement and the bidding relevance, and also most importantly, we try to increase the scale uh, um, by leveraging Twitter's uh, total audience. So later we're gonna talk about a little bit more how we can help and all of you guys. Thank you. Hello. My name is Kosuke. Uh, we are a Japanese development publisher and uh, we developed uh, 60 games and uh, published uh, uh, one game in Japan market. And next week I will publish second game in Japan market. So we are good at uh, mobile games. Recently, so we collaborate with famous Japanese character. It's like uh, this me like a top level uh, global character, and uh, local some famous character collaborate with our application. So we are good at publishing and uh, 
collaborating with famous characters. Thank you. Um, I'm Benjamin. I'm from Coda Payment. So uh, Coda is a payment integration platform based in uh, Singapore, headquartered in Singapore. So we cover six countries in Southeast Asia. Uh, actually, Indonesia is the biggest market, so we have office in Jakarta as well. Uh, I personally travel between Shanghai and Hong Kong to cover Greater China, and we just set up an office in Beijing to cover more merchants and have a new colleague there. Uh, whilst in the past two years, we've been bringing a lot of big title and big Chinese merchants, internet companies to Southeast Asia, including Baidu, UC, uh, 37, Kunlun, yeah, also like uh, YY, YY just launched their live streaming service there. And the company has been growing fast, and we just raised another round of funding. Uh, so yeah, if you want to know more about Southeast Asia and Indonesia, you can come to me. Thank you very much for your introduction. Yeah, we see that localization today is much more than translation because it's really knowing a lot the culture of the country that you want to bring your product to and uh, adapt to it. So my question would be, why did you choose a specific market to penetrate in and how did you do that and which were the challenges that you faced when you, when you did that? Okay, that would be the first. So, why we choose uh, all this market? So that actually is a very simple question. Is for the uh, China developer and the publishers because you know in China, so we have a lot of policies to control so how you publish the game and release the game on the market. And uh, of course, we have a lot of China. It's not like an overseas market. Maybe we only have uh, App Store and the Google Play, but in China, the Android China is. Um, in my mind, at least have 30 to 50 channels. So you have to make a lot of marketing activities and that is really hard. So for our development team, so maybe two days or three days, you have to get uh, 30 to 50 APK file. That is really hard work and a big, you know, big project. That's why uh, until 2016, so uh, as I saw, really more and more developers and the publishers was focused on the overseas market. Uh, for Kong Zhong, actually we built up the overseas team, it's not so long, it's only one year, and uh, right now we are focused on the Southeast Asia, on the Europe and American, and Japan and Taiwan. But for us, the localization is most important for every market, because that localization is not only the translation, the language, it's not only that. Uh, I just make an example. Let's say we launch a game in Europe. Okay, we're using English version, but the problem is, even we using the English version, but in German, in France, actually don't have a lot of people like to play. Uh, in my mind, I know that in German, actually, maybe 70 to 70% people will know how to speak English and they can read that and they, they can understand that. But the problem is they don't want to use the English. True, yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, as my experience, even by the taxi driver, so I talked in English, but the taxi driver will talk me in German back. So I could understand. That's a problem. So that's why we have to understand each market's culture. Is let's like, say in Southeast Asia, the Thailand. So the Thai people is mostly like the beautiful things, the nice things. So they more focus on the graphic. It's not focused on the gameplay. But in other countries' market, I think it's different, especially the America and Europe. So that's why yeah we are focused on the localization, cannot on the the language. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why uh, here I think Kong will have a lot of experience for the Japan market. Uh, so maybe that, we just transfer from yeah, Kong. Sure. And that's why we call it culturalization at the end and not localization anymore because you really need to culturalize the product, right? Do you want to share your experience? Um, Alright, okay. So um, actually, regarding the localization, for Twitter itself, actually, we have all the local products, I mean, in different language or in local language everywhere, so there's no more localization need. 
but what we try to do actually to help clients, our Chinese gaming company, try to localize their games. And we do see there's a lot of lots of successful story over there. Like in Japan, if you search the uh, ranking list, then you will see a lot of uh, game actually came from China. And also in Middle East, in US, it's the same thing. You will find that many, many Chinese game actually did a very good job there. So how can we help uh, on those Chinese gaming company? Because we are the platform that local people gonna have their conversation there. So we know the culture happening there as well. So that's very important that you have to have uh, Twitter accounts on the local level to see who are your potential audience and then what they are talking about. So it's social listening part is also very important for you guys to capture what's the local trend and what's the local conversation. Uh, listen to Jap uh, you know Japanese market are so hard to survive there are many uh, IP games and some uh, listen to uh, come overseas developers like uh, Clash of Clan. so hard to survive not only China but also Japan too and I think uh, uh, our goal is feature, being featured by Google and Apple but uh, why I decided to localize business and I want to know around the D from outside, for example, European country or uh, East Asian country, and import game and uh, you no know, game system. And uh, my target is one uh, one global game like uh, Clash of Clans. So at first, learn from other other side country. So first step is important. Second step is export. And uh, this is uh, ex e uh, effective for Apple and Google because good game, uh, they want to find good game. So uh, first step is import good game and run system and culture, then export. Yeah. Do you have offices like in some other places to do that or how do you do that? Uh, next, next year, I have yeah. a plan to make a branch, but now uh, only in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So, for uh, my perspective, uh, I want to share by like, um, not just payment. So, for example, in Southeast Asia, the localization is very unique. Uh, the requirements are very unique. Like uh, a lot of Chinese game developers, publishers, they would choose Southeast Asia as, as their first stop to go overseas, because like in, in Southeast Asia, Singapore, Malaysia, actually Chinese games work directly there. So um, so I heard once like, um, in, in Southeast Asia, like, uh, the local paying population would be the total amount of Chinese plus 10% of other ethnic groups. Yeah, or that. Um, so like, in Singapore and Malaysia, uh, like simplified Chinese and local, like, traditional Chinese both work. And if, you, if your game has the English version, then you will work in Philippines, Indonesia, and yeah, also Singapore and Malaysia. And but if you want to reach a wider audience, it will be uh, localized to um, Bahasa. Bahasa will cover Indonesia and Malaysia, and then um, Thai for Thailand, Vietnamese. And yeah, speaking from Coda's perspective, uh, because we are a payment company, so payment is uh, it's always the, the last step of um, the whole ecosystem, right? You have, you have make the game, you want to find someone to publish, you localize it, and then you integrate the payment. But this is also a very important step. Um, but like in Southeast Asia, uh, the payment landscape is also very unique. The credit card penetration rate is very low. So uh, in the total, I think in total it's uh, less than 10%. And in Indonesia, in Indonesia in particular, it's less than 3%, at two points I think. It's very low. Uh, the reason being like, uh, is because like previously in the financial crisis in Indonesia, uh, a lot of, of credit card users in Indonesia, they, they default their credit card. So the bank stopped issuing credit cards. And even their debit card doesn't have a, like a Visa and Master logo on it, so they can only use it in the local network. So that's why Coda actually saw it as an opportunity to integrate different payment methods in, in the 
region. Uh, for example, we have a carry billing and we have um, ATM card. So uh, you don't see it anywhere else. This is like, uh, the user will use the ATM card, go to an ATM machine to do transfer. Um, by, or they use a temporary code that we send them by SMS so they can top up to the game. Yeah, because it doesn't work online unless it's like Visa or Master. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and also we have like cash payment in, in, ATI, in the convenience stores, local 7 Eleven and uh, Apple Mart. So, uh, because in Indonesia, a lot of people still trust cash more than anything else. Yeah. Even like for like e commerce, they still choose like cash on delivery instead of primary. It's so interesting. There are so many things to consider when localizing a game. That uh, how do you do that? Do you have like a checklist of things, or do you have like who who is part of your team? Which are the, the expert that that take care of different things? So also at first, okay for the localization. Um, actually, localization is quite. Uh, uh, how to say? Because that is will depends on the market. So uh, I just make an example. Let's say for the Southeast Asia market, maybe that is more people will know have more knowledge there. And uh, just now, like uh, uh, Ben said, so for Southeast Asia market, actually they have a lot of language. So in China, most of the developer and publishers were thinking that Southeast Asia market is a big area and the same same area. Actually, not. Because it's different language, like Bahasa, is only using uh, in Malaysia and uh, and uh, Indonesia, maybe a part of Singapore, right? And uh, for Thailand, that is of course pure Thai, and for uh, Vietnam, it's Vietnamese, right? So that's why for us, we didn't think that Southeast Asia market is the same region, as one region. Mm -hmm. We just separate of each for each region, each country. And for localization, the first step, we will try to think our game will be launched in Singapore and Malaysia first. Okay. Because the Singapore is around 90% or 95% of the is Chinese, right? And for Malaysia, so 25% is Chinese. Uh -huh. They know how to read, they know how to write Chinese. Yeah, that's why uh, mostly we will launch the Chinese version first in Singapore and Malaysia, but on that time, the problem is you have to understand the Singapore and Malaysia culture. They don't think the Chinese game is good. Especially if the game they know that from the China developers. Because we still have Taiwan. Yet a lot of Malaysian and the Singaporean was playing from the Taiwan version. That means uh, traditional Chinese, it's not a simple Chinese. Uh, sometimes we will try to pack our game like uh, from Taiwan sometimes but that is depends on the game time and uh, the second part is a uh, uh, is a payment part actually because in Singapore and uh, Malaysia maybe Singapore is still better but in Malaysia the credit card users really less that is maybe only 10 or 20 percent users to pay by credit card but the other Player they like to play uh, like to pay like uh, using um, I don't know how to say that point cards yeah like uh, yeah they buy the point cards from Seven Eleven from the supermarket something like that so you have to try to think how to building the third party payment in your game that is really hard because of course Apple Store maybe cannot and uh, the Android version. Sometimes Google Play will didn't actually they didn't allow them to do that. So you have to try another way. But this you know, in this part, I think uh, Ben will have more experience about that. Uh, that is the second. And the third side that you have to think about how to push our game on the market means the marketing activities. For the marketing in uh, Singapore, normally we just maybe have the advertising on Twitter, on Facebook, or Google. But in Malaysia, the online marketing is not enough anymore. It means you have to do a lot of ground marketing. That's why uh, right now we have a lot of uh, uh, partners. They are doing um, like Facebook bloggers and uh, uh, YouTubers. Yeah, we're using a lot of ground 
monthly active fees to push our games, and it seems like the performance is not that bad. Yeah, that is the third step. And uh, finally, we have to try uh, another other countries. It's let's say Thai, let's say Indonesia. But for us, that will be the, the after the game launched in Singapore, Malaysia, we have to try see how is the stats and how is the the, the perform game performance. So if not really well, we have to maybe adjust our game, maybe try to ask developers about us to do other changes, something like that. So that is the uh, most important three steps or four steps. So for this part, as Andrew mentioned, the checklist where you start doing localization, then uh, I have a long checklist here. But mainly, I just can just separate it. Like, uh, okay, firstly, uh, you can set up a social media account. Uh, that's the very first things. And then secondly, uh, you need to listen what your target audience are talking about. You have to hear their voice. Then after that, you have to select a certain conversation then join them. Okay, that's very, very important to leverage social media. Because once you join them, you will find out okay, how your brand, how your game will interact, and the, how the target audience actually engage with your brand and your game. So after that, you can deliver right, what you really want to push out or what the audience really care about. So that's the checklist that I have if you go to a certain local markets and then do the localization. And like just now, Simon mentioned, uh, even in Singapore, uh, although they speak Chinese and there are lots of Chinese there, but the Chinese there is really, really different from what we saw. So yeah, I'm not Singaporean, but I stayed in Singapore about seven years. So like, just give you an example, if you mention the water is hot, right? Normally we say, oh, 水很热, 水很烫, right? But Singaporean will say, 水很烧, So that's really, really a culture difference. And then the language also inf influenced by the dialect um, locally as well. So on this detailed things, it may really, really the key elements when you push a message of your brand or push your products or game to those audience, whether they consider to play it or to try it. So that's what I can talk about regarding the localization part. Yeah, especially Singapore SEA. That meanwhile for Japan, I believe it's a totally different market. And then the yeah, that's I think that's the home of the whole world of gaming and the cartoon as well. And I believe um, so could, could give us a little bit more advice on that. First, um, Japan market is especially monetization and uh, anime taste. This is a big difference between Japan and other country. Uh, monetization, so you know, gacha system is very unique. But recently, not only gacha system, but also uh, about uh, 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 booming up uh, video as uh, monetization. Uh, this is very important things. Uh, Japanese network connection, uh, connection uh, is very good, so everybody can access in the uh, mobile provider share big uh, uh, capacity. So many users can watch video and uh, TV on mobile. Recently, uh, watch on video as so uh, uh, next year, uh, next week, so we will publish a new game uh, from Taiwan. But at first, they didn't use a video as system. But uh, we will uh, integrate the video as system because it's uh, effective for monetization. Not only gacha system, but also monetization. Uh, this is very important things, and I think. Uh, Japanese people like uh, anime taste character. It's like a Zivui or a Naruto or One Piece like that. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, you like uh, Naruto and One Piece. But I think a European, especially European game, they like real taste. So sometimes uh, we will change the character, uh, not only characters, uh, taste, uh, skin taste. This is 
very important and uh, we uh, take care of the so big difference. Uh, this, uh, mm, this is a very big difference. Yeah, that's true. Do you see actually the impact of localization on monetization, like for example, you or you? I mean, do you really see the difference in only like translating a game or localizing it for, for a market? Do you see that in your game, like in terms of revenues, for example, and try it only translating a game or localizing a game? Yeah. I mean, when you take a game from a foreign country, then you modify everything to adapt it to Japan, right? Because the Japanese culture is so different than you modify yeah, yeah, the especially. UI, modify the mechanics and yes. everything. And that's what you can see in monetization also, mm -hmm. and yeah, in yeah, the yeah, revenues yeah. as well. I mean, yeah, big difference. Uh, so recently, so uh, how to survive uh, many uh, developers disappeared in the century two years. So there are uh, many big players. Yeah. So I think uh, for casual games, uh, a publisher pay for money and good quality. So, and uh, special monetization, very important. Pay payment, not, not only in images, but also video arts yeah. is very important in century. Payment system is very important, right? Well, I think I have good news for Koski. I, um, I, I mentioned, like in, in Southeast Asia, like the culture, the language is very diverse. But um, I, overall, the, the population is very young. Like for example, in Indonesia, uh, over half of the population is under 35 years old. It's amazing, the youngsters. So uh, they, they love Japanese culture. They love Korean culture. Yeah, they love the game style to be like the Korean Japanese style, the, the manga, anime style. Right? Uh, yeah, also they did play European, like uh, European and US market games, like right? um, this popular Battle Royale, COC, right? Uh, yeah, like because there's a, there's a big population of young people, uh, social media is very important. So I think Kevin knows that too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so uh, like for example in Indonesia, People say uh, it's the internet, it's Facebook. They think Facebook is the internet. So every time they, they go to the internet, they open Facebook, look at their po friends' posts, post things up on Facebook. They use Instagram, Twitter, Line to communicate. And like, uh, the biggest e-commerce platform in, in Indonesia is actually Instagram. So people post the things that they want to sell on Instagram. Yeah. And on Facebook, so uh, a lot of publishers so uh, in order to be successful, they, they not only publish the game on the official stores, uh, Google Play, App Store, uh, they also put a version on their Facebook, they create a Facebook fan page, and put a like third party, um, a version with third party payment on the Facebook. So there are two links, one to the Google Play App Store, one link to the, the, the now official version. So they can integrate like Coda to cover more paying users. Actually, I have one last question because I guess we're running out of time. I could talk about it forever, but <laughs> yeah. When do you decide to localize a product? Like, do you see that it's successful and then you decide to bring it to another country or do you start immediately? And if you do it after, how do you deal with internationalization issues that they can appear after? Because I had some experience with choosing to localize a product after the developing and we had a lot of issues for like um, Chinese characters, spacing and things like that. So it's really interesting to, to have your opinion on that because we are also different backgrounds, so yeah. Okay, this time I start first, right? So I'll let the salad take a break. <laughs> right, so um, I have a big question about this question um, because when you decide to localize products uh, to a certain market then you have been already assumed that you have a product is not designed for this market exactly that, that's right the question. so uh, from my clients uh, business I see uh, that two options a lot of people actually just design uh, product specific for market 
like some of the game uh, gaming company actually they launching game in Japan first. They even don't have a game in China, right? They launch in Japan first, or they launch in US first, then yeah. coming back, bring back to China. But for traditional or for existing gaming company, they may already have a product. They will definitely choose uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan first. That's the language culture all very similar, and also then go to the Southeast Asia. Then after that, whether this game is too popular or whether we want to uh, continue monetize, then they will go to Japan or US and make an English version or even go to Middle East. So I think that's a two strategy there. But to me, uh, to answer your question, it really depends on the company's strategies, right? If you have a first strategy, I mean, your goal is to go global. To get this game to go global, then you have to think about it before or even you develop this game. I totally agree. Yeah. But if it's just because you bought an IP, uh, you bought a, or you have a very good team to set up a very good game according to your own interest, then you probably you just choose a few markets that you are best um, intent, have a best intention to or have best uh, expertise there then to build up. So I then if the game really goes success then you probably think about localization to go other markets as well yeah yeah thank you very much Whatever. i agree with kevin so uh, in our case uh, we are japan first but so uh, at the planning phase so we are thinking to go well uh, simple UI, uh, non verbal game system. It's like uh, Angry Birds or Tap Titans. So this is a uh, mid middle or middle core. This is our target. So uh, at first, focusing on Japan market and simple UI. Then uh, we are focusing on East Asia or Southeast Asia. Then global. So our global, our uh, internationalization has some steps. Yeah. First time, so focusing on near area, so for example, East Asia or Southeast Asia. And sometimes, so IP is very effective, so we are discussing uh, cooperating with some our game, uh, so many some steps, so simple game. Negotiating with uh, APEC, uh, Google, and Amazon Manager, or cooperating with IP. And I think localization, uh, these things are more important of localization, for, uh, in my opinion, because uh, Leech and uh, have seen, to have seen is more important, I think. Not uh, more important of language. So, this is our thinking. Okay. From my experience dealing with publishers, I think they always um, publish um, English version and Chinese version first on the official store for Southeast Asia, and they will see like which country has the uh, best feedback, and then they decide to localize. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Be on the safe side, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so when. So the game globalization. Uh, actually, these questions we will think uh, think of that from 2014, because uh, the 2014, you know, that in China a lot of uh, investors, a lot of money was going the mobile game market, and uh, of course, the, the mobile game was much easier than the client game if by the development part. Uh, so, but the problem is if for the client game. You have to spend a, a huge money, and you have to spend a long time to develop it. But for the mobile game, I think it will be much lesser. So I have no idea right now here how many developers from overseas and how many developers from China. But as my experience in China, so the developer period maybe it's only two or three months. That is really faster. Yeah, yeah that's why 
a lot of time you have you, you, you have no idea what we try to develop. We just copy. That is the truth. Yeah, maybe we found some games and from the overseas market is really famous. Let's say uh, Supercell COC, right now. And on that time, I remember at least have ten or fifteen games is like COC type. So I saw that and I tried, but have no one was really successful in China, and no any games was successful in overseas market. If the, let's say the COC games. So uh, for my thinking, uh, the localization had to start from the uh, from. Which games you want to develop? It's like say SLG game or RPG game. So your focus market is different. If the, for the SLG game, so means your game maybe mostly is focused on American and Europe. Because that it's really famous, really good. But if for the RPG game, so means mostly you focus on the Asia market, Korea and uh, Southeast Asia, right? Uh, of course, Japan market, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite different. Um, so when you choose the game type and game background, then you only think about what things I have to do. Uh, for example, the language. Because right now, the, uh, for myself, I feel the super sales and uh, it likes the language organization was doing really good. They can build up a uh, more than 20 or more than 25 languages in the game, in the product. That means you can target all more audience, more audience from each country. But for most of developers' system, they can't support that system. That is a localization uh, problem. And uh, another point is if you, when you finish all of the developer works, you only try to think about how to localize and how to uh, launch the game in overseas that will be really hard because maybe you have to change a lot of things from the game, especially the gameplay, especially the game say oh four of the systems. Yeah, the, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, and, uh, yeah, it's a, actually it's impossible. So that's why a lot of them the publishers with the feel oh the developer didn't support us. The developer is not uh, allowed us to change out something. That is not allowed. That means they can't do that. They can't. That's so that's why a lot of game was in the overseas market field. Ah, the game is from China. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And even the UI, even the, the graphing is like from from a Eastern culture. But the game is is that oh, still from China. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, my opinion. Yeah, thank you very much. So I think we can all agree on the fact that localization is much more than only translation and uh, takes a lot of effort and we really need to know the culture while we bring the product. So if any of you has a question, otherwise we can just discuss it over lunch. And uh, I would like to thank you all very much. It was really an interesting discussion. I told you I could go on forever because <laughs> that's my passion. But I think...